Hey guys, welcome to Sunny Bermuda. You know it is a bad day when Sunny has the sprinklers out. Because you know how, if you watch my videos, you're familiar with how much water is in my neighborhood. Our water authority buys it from the city, and that city buys it from another city, and all that cost get passed down to me. But our video today is not going to be in the yard. It's going to be up there in my crepe myrtle trees. So let's run up there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are. I got three crepe myrtles planted. One, two, and then a third one down there. They are the Natchez crepe myrtle. So they grow up really tall, like 24 feet, hopefully. So I love them when they get tall. They look really good at the edge of the property. But today I'm gonna to talk to you about a problem that I've had with these crepe myrtles, but more specifically this one, a little bit with the second one. The third one actually did okay last year. Toward the end of the season, I did plant these last spring, but by the fall, sooty mold, or sooty mold, however you want to call it, was all over these things. In fact, you can still see, see the stalks. They look kind of a dark colored up here around where the leaves were. And as you get down to the bottom, they look like a normal crepe myrtle. Yeah, sooty mold can wreak havoc on crepe myrtles. You may have seen them toward the end of the growing season, July, August, the leaves are black crusty material that you know that gets all over the leaves but there's a little bug on them now and the leaves actually end up falling off before they're meant to fall off in the fall now what is the cause of city mold it's caused by little tiny insects if you if you know a tree that has one you could probably look up under the leaves this is fresh growth here we are in may and may is the prime time to to protect these trees from it but they're caused by little insects, usually aphids or sometimes scales. And they love crepe myrtles. They will suck the leaves, these juicy green leaves, for plant juices. And as they digest the juices, they excrete a sugary substance that we call honeydew. Your leaves will start out kind of shiny. And I noticed this last year. They start out real shiny and I thought they looked really pretty because they had shiny leaves. I was oh, they're healthy. But little did I know it was honeydew. And they feel real slick too if you touch them with that shiny stuff on them but it attracts other insects and it also attracts mold in the air because down south is so humid there's always mold floating through the air so how are we going to treat it let's head to the garage real quick and we're going to mix up a little concoction and treat these three crepe myrtles and prevent it from getting sue mold this year that way they stay green they stay flowered and look beautiful all summer long Okay, here we are in the garage. I got my little collapsible work table. I get so many questions about this table. I love this table. It'll collapse and fold up the size of a briefcase and store it away neatly in the garage. It takes up a little space. It's actually made by Keter, K-E-T-E-R. And I'll put a link to this in the description and also on my website. But this is all you need to cure up the sooty mold on your crepe myrtles. Some acephate. And I picked up this product here. It's a group one insecticide. And of course, the active ingredient is acephate. It's 97%. That's where the acephate 97 up comes from. A little container, doesn't matter what kind to mix it in. Then a tablespoon and some gloves to protect your hands. And then a little applicator, a little paintbrush or a little foam applicator like this to apply it to the tree. Okay, I got my gloves on. Well, let me put this glove on. Almost forgot. I went ahead and put one tablespoon of water in my little can here. I got, what you do is you mix four parts acetate. So four tablespoons with one tablespoon of water. So let's go ahead and do that. I do not recommend doing a smell test on this product. One. Two, three, and four level tablespoons. Hopefully this will be enough to cover the three trees. Because if you remember we do, I had, I think four stalks on two trees and, and three on the other. I may cut them back to three at a later date, but I'm gonna go ahead and treat all of them. What we'll do is we'll mix this up real good, make a 
a nice paste out of it. And then when we get up to the trees, I'll show you how to apply it. Okay, here we are back up at the little crepe myrtle trees. What you want to do is first, you want to measure that, the diameter of the little tree trunks. And I just have my little speed square from my workshop. You measure it, and that looks like a little over half an inch, maybe five eighths. So what we'll do, you take the diameter and you want to double it. This one looks a little smaller. Yeah, this looks right at a half an inch. But you take your diameter and you want to double it and that's how tall your band is. And you want to put it down here close to the ground level. And what the product, what the asphate insecticide is, is a, it soaks into the bark because it's a, a thin bark little tree. It's not like your big oaks or your pine trees that, that we see way out here. It's really thin bark. So it's a stemic. It'll soak into the, through the bark and get into the system and come up and, and get in the leaves. That way when the aphids or the little scale bite into the leaves and eat it and suck the juices out, they'll get the insecticides and fall off and die. This, that's one method. Another method is they have granules that you can sprinkle around or you can do a little trench around your tree and pour some liquid. S same product, acephate, around it. But this product you have to do once in May and then once again in July. So let's, let me see what this looks like. It's basically clear. Most of the little granules have dissolved. It's really good to put it in hot water too and it helps dissolve a little faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip it in here. And this is a, let's see how big this brush is. Yeah, it's a one inch little foam brush from my paint supplies. So we'll do it one inch, a little over an inch. We'll just go ahead and do an inch and a half since some of these are three fourths of an inch. They also, they also have some that are pre-mixed that actually does a visible white band around it that you can actually see. This one's clear. Get that pine straw out of the way. And it won't hurt the tree. It basically just hurt harms whatever is eating the leaves. In fact, I could take whatever's left in here and pour it around the base of the trees. That way it gets absorbed through the root system. As you can, as I see here, there are little, little, they actually look like aphids, little bugs climbing up it. Okay, got all three crepe myrtles done. One, two, three. I was right, these two did have four stalks on them. This one, three. I think I'm gonna trim these back to cut one stalk off. That way I only have three trunks, each one all the way around. And also trim up this huge oak tree. That way this one has room to grow up. But guys, I hope you learned a little bit about the good old city mold. That's really prevalent down south here and how to cure your crepe myrtles from getting it and dying off. That way you have pretty green leaves all summer long throughout till the end of fall and uh, pretty pretty flowers too. You can see the tops up here they're already getting ready to start budding flowers. So if you're not a subscriber be sure you, you subscribe because really getting ready to do some yard videos. Got some bare spots here and learn how to fix those and do a whole lot of other things to the yard. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like this video and want to see more and we will see you in the next one. Hope you have a great day.